parents many many times correct them, rebuke them, guide them. Not because they're hating or they're just tired of raising kids. No, it's unconditional. You know, have you seen other parents rebuke other children? They do. They're very careful and cautious because they're not related. This is the same idea and same way. God and us are tied because He is our daddy. Dada. <laughs> That's why he wants to discipline his own children. So through the process of discipline, she understands. She now comprehended much more of the cross and the resurrection of life. Okay, hold on here. Yeah. So verse 8, come down with me from Lebanon. So the first point is, he wants to go through all the hardships. But it is not our own power and beyond our capability to go through. That's why those hardships and difficulties would come to our lives. God is going to be with us. So through that, we understand how much God loves us. So no matter what, no matter under what circumstances, God never leaves us. God is always with us and watch over us. So it depends on how we respond to Him. Whether we respond to Him promptly or maybe 24 hours later. But God is still there. God is patient God. He just waited quietly for us to react, respond, give ourselves to Him. So in order for us to endure those hardship, God wants us to grow spiritually. So we come to verse 8. God says, come with me from Lebanon. So God demands from His own children two things. Number one, I already mentioned. He asks His children to rise up out of their circumstances. Secondly, He asks His children to go along with Him in His circumstances. Not our own circumstances. But He wants us to get out of our circumstances. Whatever we have, whatever under the circumstances we are in, God says, come out of it. Come with me. Come into my circumstances. See, what's the difference? We believe Jesus Christ. That's why we come to church. But that's the one thing. Another thing is what? When we go out of the church, we want to live on our own perspective. Because of what? Fear of man's eyes. We want to compromise. We know we receive this grace through the knowledge. We have a full of knowledge in our head. Why Jesus came down to this world and to die for us. To give us eternal life. We all understand. We all comprehend. The cross of death. But as we go out. When we go back to normal life. We just forget about it. Because we have our own agenda to live. That's not what God wants from us. Once we became His children, He wants to live, us to live on His agenda, on His perspective. 
That's the only way God can reveal His power and love grace through us. God says, come out of your circumstances and come along with me. You know, Lebanon is uh, just a figurative language, as I mentioned. Where is Lebanon? Anybody knows? To Africa? <laughs> <laughs> to the north of Israel. Okay? Hold on. Lebanon means in Hebrew, highest point. You know, Christian position should be on mountaintop, highest point. So it's not a matter of leaving from Lebanon. Lebanon is the <coughs> highest point. God wants us to grow, in other words, in figuratively. God wants us to have a wings of faith to rise higher and then look down to the earth what is going on. See, when we go up to the mountain, what we can see? The top of the world, Laguna Beach. Why? Wow, so 300 degrees open, right? in front of me is the uh, oceans. When I turn, what is it? Canyon and mountain. Wild flowers. You can see everything. See, God wants us to grow up to that point, highest point. You know the uh, manna? Confirmation or truth. Here, verse 8. It relates to the word Amen. So be it. Yes, Lord. The way we say Amen is so be it. Yes, I agree with you. You're right. That's the meaning of Hebrew. <coughs> Truth. Okay. Later I'll show you. Sinner. Armor given by the Holy Spirit. This old mountaintop, Herman. Destruction. Victory of cross. Jesus Christ. He was crucified on the cross and he rose from the dead and he defeated the power of the dead. That's, that's what it meant. Herman? Okay, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. from verse 12. I'm going to read it for you. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Verse 13. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. Sinner, right? And the body, armor of God's righteousness. For shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of this, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. See, Paul is using the Roman armor, Roman soldier. So picture Roman soldiers. What's the name of the movie that? Huh? Gladiator. What did he wear? Belt of truth. Sword. Sword of the Spirit. Helmet of salvation. What is the breast 